The truck was likely coming down one of these side streets here, and for whatever reason, it could not stop, did not stop, kept going at a high rate of speed. I uh, hit the landscaping here, you see the tire track, went right through the shrubs, got some airtime, and then slammed right into this house. One guy I talked to who had just pulled up on the scene as we did, he said, hey, my mom works there. She called me, uh, said she might have heard what sounded like some gunshots. People coming from all across Michiana to pay their respects to Staff Sergeant Jesse Williams. These spots behind me were empty just 10, 20 minutes ago. They're starting to fill up. Still many trucks and vehicles down there. Tow trucks have been working their way into the scene all evening, trying to free up some of those semis you see out there and pull them out of the eastbound lanes. Report of shots fired about a block in that direction. They arrived and found some drugs and a gun at the scene, but someone flagged them down and pointed them over here toward this apartment complex. This is where they found her just on the edge of this cornfield during the final moments of daylight this evening. She's dehydrated, she has some scrapes, but searchers tell us she stood up and walked out on her own. Heading to the scene, rescuers just knew this one would be big. Well, a lot of times you can tell, believe it or not, by the tone of the dispatcher's voice. Cool Springs Volunteer Fire Chief Mike Pollock was down there in the middle of it all. He says they didn't know where to start. There were so many vehicles, dozens of victims who were trapped. I personally started talking to him. I got to know some young lady out there. Her name was Judy. I told her, I says, I'm going to make you my priority, Judy, to get you out of this car. I took off my Nomax hood, put it on her to keep her warm. We went and got some um, blankets from the medics. We covered her up. We moved on to the next one. I got to know another young man out there. His name was Jeff. 48-year-old Jeff Rennell was in a very tricky spot, pinned between multiple semis, and firefighters were having a really tough time getting him out. An hour went by, then two hours. He was conversing real well because I told him, I said, Jeff, it's after 5 o'clock, but when we get you out, I'm going to take you out for a beer, my friend. And he started laughing. Yeah. The temperature dropped into single digits. The sun dipped below the horizon. And as the rescue approached its fourth hour, they finally freed Jeff and took him to a waiting medical helicopter. And I kept apologizing to him. I told him, I said, Jeff, I said, you're making us work for your, our money here tonight. And he, just to make humor, to get his mind off of where he was and what was going on. In the middle of such chaos, it was a reassuring voice that the victims heard. It'll live with us forever. Yeah, that's something that you'll never forget. Oh, it's just getting bigger and bigger. This. A big mass of fire is one way. And steel and smoke. To meet the neighbor. It's wild. I've never seen something like this before. Nothing except maybe a parade attracts such attention on the streets of Mishawaka. Oh, it's bad. It's, it's pretty windy. I don't think we should all be out here standing, but it's something to watch. Hundreds of people dropped their dinner plans. I don't think they're going to be able to put it out. And ran outside to see the former RMG Foundry building go out with, well, a bang. Oh, man. A... Everything's blowing up inside there. There's smoke everywhere. Inside, more than 200 cars, boats, and RVs. It's gone now, so. Their fuel tanks exploding every few minutes. That part looks like it's about to collapse right there. See it? A spectacular show. I think I just probably burned to the ground. That played out in prime time. It's crazy. Something you'll always remember. Ted Land. WSBT Channel 22 News. President Obama says the Affordable Care Act website where Americans can buy health insurance plans is working better after weeks of errors. But for some users, the problems continue. WSBT's Ted Land met with a Dwajak woman who just wants to sign up for a plan. Ted, by now, this has to be pretty frustrating for her. Well, she expected it to be working by now. A lot of Americans felt the same way. But for some people, healthcare.gov still is not allowing them to purchase health insurance. And now they're wondering if it ever will. Here's where Robin Beesbor would prefer Come on, ponies. to spend her time. <laughs> They're watching us already. Out on her little farm just outside Dewajak. This is Blackjack. There's a whole list of chores to keep her busy. And this is Tuppence. But these days, she's occupied with something else. It's not letting me go to the next step. I have nothing. I can't get any farther. The experts may be working on healthcare.gov somewhere in Washington. I don't know what else to do. But at kitchen tables across the country, some people are still getting nowhere. It keeps saying that I'm in progress, 
But if I do any of the things that it has on here, it says that I can't do it. Her first attempt at buying health insurance was this past weekend. Now this has got to be about 10. Almost a dozen tries. I keep getting clicked off. <laughs> she can't even get to the page where you actually choose a plan. So I'm kind of like in limbo right now. Calls to the helpline and the website managers haven't helped. I don't talk politics. You know, I don't care. Democrat, Republican, whatever is good for whatever is going to be done is fine with me. But it's got to work. It doesn't. Come on. And it's becoming a real distraction. I just don't see how this is going to get everybody signed up by the time that they say it's going to. Well, students at Goshen High School recently found a way to help one of their classmates using some cutting edge technology. This is so cool. As WSBT's Ted Land shows us, it's part of a curriculum teaching advanced engineering skills and some pretty valuable life lessons. There's actually a machine that'll make whatever you want. Students are mesmerized watching something that they created uh, appear right before their eyes. Just plug in some directions, and line by line, it prints in plastic. It's mesmerizing, isn't it? Teacher J.J. Johnson just couldn't wait to get his hands on one of these 3D printers. My wife actually bought it for me a few weeks ago for completing my master's degree. I, I just can't tell students no, so we just print on this thing nonstop. It's here at the school about as much as it is at home. It's unlocked all kinds of opportunities for the engineering and design students at Goshen High School. They're using it to fabricate custom parts for race cars they've designed and built. Right here we have the mirror mount and it has an axis so we can rotate it, which is really nice when I'm driving. iPhone holders, brackets, toys, they're always trying something new. Just to see kind of the light bulb go off in the top of their head, um, it, it's amazing. Freshman Ivan Lopez had never heard of a 3D printer, didn't know anyone in that design class down the hall, until they heard about a problem she was having with her gait trainer, kind of like a walker. It's hard enough getting around when you have cerebral palsy. I couldn't keep my balance very well. But the journey to third period is made even more difficult when your backpack keeps hitting you from behind. It would push in and it would push her seat out and she couldn't walk, that would affect her gait. So the design class so got right walk. to work. After trial and error, we just got the best version. Within days, a custom fix, two printed clips. This is the final product. And a metal bar. And it just clips on and it just comes right off. You wouldn't think something that looks so simple and so basic could do so much, but it actually really does. So I'm extremely impressed. It works wonderful. Um, it makes life so easy. For, for me. Isn't technology amazing? It's a great thing that they did it for me. It's 